testing, one, two, three. Hello, class. I'm going to go over the uh, uh, practice test number two for statistics uh, over chapter four, sections one, two, three, and four. Okay, so what I have here is uh, from your module seven um, regarding test number two for statistics, the template. So you want to make sure you print this and it, it, it tells you you'll have 110 minutes and when you're done, you want to upload your work within 15 minutes of submitting your Canvas assignment. Um, and uh, it tells you more or less what the points are worth. And so, yes, the test is mostly a form of multiple choice, um, but that's only worth one or two points for getting the correct answer. You also have to, uh, the rest of the points, it tells you, talks about the point system here. So you have to show your work using the rules and the vocabulary that we've learned. And so when you upload your work as a Canvas assignment, it's your student's responsibility um, to make sure that you have all your pages uploaded. So after you submit an assignment, you're able to check to see what your PDF looked like and what you actually uploaded. So that's your responsibility to do that. Okay. Um, and then and then no work equals no credit. If, if you decide that you don't want to turn in your work for whatever reason, then, then just understand that you don't get full credit for that. That's your student responsibility. Um, so you have to upload your work for credit, okay? Now, the other page that you're allowed to use um, is uh, this uh, um, little uh, template in your module seven. It's a formula sheet. So we're going to need the deck of cards and the sample space for rolling two dice. Um, and so you want to print that. Um, this, when you print this, you want to fix this because I think originally these had uh, extra equal signs. So I have since uh, did a little white out and I put uh, colons in here. And so you do want to fix that. And we will make use of this like for uh, quiz three. And then up here, we will also make use of this for um, test number three. And I think also some of quiz three uses this. So I was just trying to save paper. And so you, we're gonna use this for the rest of the semester. So you're allowed to use that. And then there is also another sheet that you can have out and use. Um, of course, uh, your test review, I'm gonna go over the test review and you can use your test review while you're taking your time tests and you're being videotaped. So that's another thing is, you know, your courses, uh, whether you have the online or the um, remote learning uh, style is it requires um, that you be proctored by video recording using Canvas, right, and the webcam, a form of recording. And so it's your responsibility to have um, at the beginning of the semester we talked about, and it even says it in the description that the student's responsible to have reliable internet. So that's the student's responsibility to have that ready to go, especially when we're taking tests. And so um, when you take your tests, you can also use uh, this sheet of important formulas. So uh, this has other information like chapter five and chapter three, but of course we're interested in chapter four. And so you see here how we have the addition rules. There's two of them, one and two. Multiplication rules, one and two conditional probability, complementary probability, and then this is 4.4. There is one formula missing here. Um, there's the fundamental counting rule, the permutation rule, the combination rule, and then there's there's the other one that's, uh, I think it's called like the permutation rule number two. Um, and so there is one formula missing here, uh, but uh, I will write that down when we take our when we do our practice test, I'll put that formula in that related problem. Okay, and then the other thing you're allowed to use is this, uh, also this has a test number two. This is also just reminding you of the things that you wanna be able to do. So be sure you read this, be sure you re read this and it tells you what you wanna be able to show and understand for the test, okay? Um, and so, let me see if there's anything in the back. 
Yeah, and it's pretty thorough. I don't see the 4.4 rules on here, um, but that's fine. I mean, we have them in other places like the important formula sheet, we do have them. So I don't see these located there at the bottom per se. Mm. But I think it does mention them here, see? So it just doesn't have them listed, but they're they're there right here, statement, okay? All right, okay, so let's get started then. There is gonna be one extra problem that I'm gonna add to our review. Um, but other than that, I'm gonna work out the problems in the review, so let's do that. All right, so we'll start, we'll start with number one here, okay? So it asks, um, a probability experiment is conducted, which of these cannot be considered a probability outcome? And then circle the, the correct choices. And then it also wants you to justify your responses using complete sentences, okay? So I'm gonna start with the definition for probability, okay? So I'm gonna say that um, probability outcomes Use a pen. Probably outcomes must be values between zero and one inclusive. Okay, and also 0% uh, and 100% inclusive also. Okay, and so that's, that's where we get this here. This probability of an event E, probability of an event E. Okay. Okay, and then you have probably an event E, and this is between zero and 100%, whereas this is zero and one, okay? And we also say that, um, we'll put period here, um, no, negative values are permitted or are allowed and no values greater than one or uh, 100. So no values greater than one or greater than a hundred percent. Are allowed, okay? All right, okay. So then when you look at your choices, uh, first you start with two fifths. So if I get my calculator to see what's the value of two fifths. So if I do two divided by five, that is 0.4, which is, if you think about money, it's like 40 cents. So that would, 40 cents is like between zero and a dollar. So that would be allowed, okay? Negative six, seven. So let me just see what six divided by seven is. That's a, looks like that's a repeating decimal. See how it says eight, five, seven. Well, that actually looks like it's a negative repeating decimal. So I'm gonna put the bar over the numbers that start with eight and that run through two. 
And the thing is, it's a negative. And remember, we said no negative value. So that's why I'm going to circle that. That's not, um, cannot be a probability outcome. So you can't have negatives. Zero is allowed because see these underscores actually allow zero. OK, this is not allowed because it's a negative number. OK, so no negative values are permitted. This is not allowed, 1 and 19 hundredths, because it cannot, see, it cannot go over 1. So no values um, greater than 1. OK, that's 1.19. 28% is allowed. 28% is actually equal to 0 0.28. So if you think about money, like 28 cents, so that's a number between 0 and 1. 66 cents, that's a number between 0 and 1, so that's OK. 1 is OK because of this underscore. But this one's not 120%. You can't have anything greater than 100%. So that goes over. OK, so these are, those would be the ones that are not allowed. OK, the probability that it will snow tomorrow in Minnesota is 78 hundredths. Uh, what's the probability that it will not snow tomorrow in Minnesota? Show your work using rules for complementary events for full credit. Okay, so complementary events. Let's see what we have on our paper about complementary events. Let's see. Um, here it just says find the probably probability using rules for complementary events, but it doesn't have the formula on there. OK, let me see what this page does, though. Let's see. OK, see, complementary events. See this probably of, of E bar. OK, so it's like the complement probably of the complement of E. 1 minus probability of E. OK, so that's to do with the complement. OK, so I'm going to start by saying probability that it won't snow tomorrow in Minnesota. So P stands for probability that it won't snow tomorrow. OK, and this is in Minnesota. OK, so this is, this is equal to P E bar, right? And then according to the definition, you can see here that P E bar, the P complement of E probability of the, the complement of the event is one minus the probability of the event. Okay, so then this is one minus the probability. So this says that it won't snow. That's why you have this. Okay. So this says now probably that it will snow in Minnesota. It will snow in Minnesota. tomorrow. So I have, actually have a friend in Minnesota that I need to remind, I need to check on her, see how she's doing. I have a friend in Minnesota. Okay. All right. All right. So then, so then now I'm going to substitute my value. I'm going to sub and the probability value that it will snow in Minnesota tomorrow is 78 hundredths. So that's 1 minus 78 hundredths. And 1 minus 0.78 hundredths is 22 hundredths. OK. OK, and then it says, would you recommend wearing a coat and then justify using probably occurrence rules? OK, so they're talking about this idea here. So you have something at 0 or 0%, and then halfway you have the 
50, 50 chance. Then you have over here a hundred percent or or one. So I should say a hundred percent on the bottom and then one on top here. So this is certain to occur. This is impossible to occur. And then if it's kind of in this area, it's likely. Whereas over here, it's unlikely to occur. OK, and sometimes you're hovering around this that you could go either way. 50% it will happen, 50% it won't. So you have to just say you're in, in limbo here in between. Sometimes that happens. And yours is 0.22. So if you look at this here to see half of this would be like 0.25, which is like 25%, half of that, because that's 50%. So 0.22 is like right here. OK, so this is, this is in the unlikely range. So this is unlikely what? This is unlikely what? What? This is for this. It's unlikely that it won't snow. Unlikely that it won't snow, you know, tomorrow in Minnesota. OK, so, so this is. Um, over here, right, unlikely, it's very low, right, that it will not snow. So then, whereas remember, it was it was pretty high. Remember, it was 0.78 over here, 0 0.78, 78% that it will snow tomorrow, OK? So when they ask you, would you recommend wearing a coat? Mm -hmm, yeah, because the 78% the, the, the is somewhere over here, right? So this is about 0 0.75, right? 75%. And and this is, uh, the other number is 0 0.78, which should be about right here. So this one is likely, likely what? likely that it will snow in Minnesota. Okay. So then yeah, we want to we want to wear a coat. So you say yes. And then when you when you argue it, you can you can speak to either percent you know, you actually know both percentages, right? Or decimals, 0.22 and 0.78, or you can make them percents, but you know about both of them. Um, if uh, if they want a percentage, remember you just multiply by 100%. So if they want a percent, um, 0.22 times 100% is 22%. So, you know, they might, in your answer, they might want a decimal or they might want a percent. So you have to answer it. So you have to be ready to convert that. And then as a fraction, the fraction that would be 22 over 100, that reduces by 2. Half of 22 is 11. Half of 100 is 50. So they can actually ask for this as a decimal or a percent or as a fraction. So you do have to know how to change those and so here we can say uh, yes you know and then we can also say that since there is a 22 percent chance that it is not going to snow tomorrow in Minnesota. Then opt 
for co. Okay, and and that's because the twenty two percent probability is closer to the zero percent, right, which is the impossible to occur. Then to the hundred percent. Which is the certain to occur. Okay, and then I step making the probability unlikely. So that see, so that way um, in this paragraph. You're definitely demonstrating this. Um, they want you to demonstrate, um, see, uh, the, the rules for complementary events, right? <clears throat> to write that down, let me just look on this sheet here. Let me see. Yeah, and it talks about here know the rules for probability of an event's occurrence. An event's occurrence, impossible, 50-50 chance, and certain. So you're definitely writing about that. The rules for the probability of an event's occurrence. And that's, that's what they're talking about here. Justify using the probability's occurrence, occurrence rules, okay? Yeah, and that's what that's talking about. They're talking about this, this chart here. Okay. Yeah, so, so no mention of that, then the student will lose points. If they just answer the question, yes, then they can get one point for answering the question, but then they don't do this part where they're supposed to, we want you to, you know, we always want students uh, teachers, faculty are encouraged to have students write across the curriculum, and this gets you practice and on every test, you do a little bit of writing across the curriculum, okay? And I am qualified to grade your English. I am, a, an, I am qualified to teach English and mathematics. I'm a certified teacher that can teach that. I'm certified to teach math and English, okay? So I am certified to read your, you know, subject every sentence starts with a capital letter and you have a subject and a verb right in your thought okay okay so let's look at number two Oh, and the other thing I was going to mention on your test is remember, like, these are these are samples, right? So um, on your test, that doesn't that doesn't mean that this is like 50 50, either yes or no. On the test, you don't know what kind of question you're going to get. You don't know if it's also going to be a yes or no. So so don't think that it mimics the test exactly whatever this is on it. This this author has the author of the test that has some leeway. They can change it up a bit. So you, you need to understand the concepts, okay, when you, when you do your math on this. So we have no idea if this is going to be under 50% or over 50% so that, you know, you have to be able to work your logic with that, okay? Okay, so three says that if two dice are rolled one time, so here's two dice, Find the probability of getting a sum of eight or a sum of six. Enter your answers as a fraction in simplest form. So you see how your teacher has the event space for getting a sum of eight, and then the event space for getting a sum of six. And then this one is an or, not an and. 
it's an or. So I'm going to put the or here. And remember what happens with the or. Pretty much um, you want to sum the events outcomes. And then if you have any overlaps, then you want to subtract any overlaps, if you have them. So we have the mutually exclusive, right? And then the mutually inclusive. So let's, let's see. It's ex exclusive means that there's no overlaps, OK? So let's see which, which one we have. So uh, this is where you use your sample space here for rolling two dice. And you want a, a sum of exactly eight. Didn't say at least eight. Didn't say eight or more. It said exactly eight. Or less than eight. Didn't say less than eight. So exactly eight. So if I go through and I try and count, this is a sum of two. This is three. This is four, five. This is six. This is seven. So nothing on the first one first row. This is three. This total is four. This total is five. This total is six. This total is seven. Six and two. Uh-huh. So it's six and two. So this die rows on a two. This one lands on a six. So two and six. That gives, that gives you eight. So that's, that could be the first one you can write here. Okay, then we have, that's a total of four, that's a total of five, six, seven, uh-huh, here's another eight, three and five. Okay, that gives you eight. Okay, then we have, that's nine, this is five. Six, seven, aha, uh -huh. here's eight, four and four. That'll work. This is nine, this is ten, six, seven. Five and three is eight. Five and three is eight. So this is five and three. That's a total of eight. That's nine. That's ten. That's eleven. This is seven. Six and two is eight. Six. And two, there's, that's eight. Is that a work? I think that's the last one. Six and two is eight. Yeah, because that's nine, 10, 11, and 12. Yeah. Okay, so those, those won't work. When exactly eight. All right. So then remember, if this is an or, we don't do this for the and, but this is an or. Remember, we count our totals, event spaces. So one, two, three, four, five. This has a total of five total outcomes. OK, and you see all the others. There's a total of 36, right? One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. So six times six is 36, right? Six times six is 36 total outcomes. So you can write that on your paper if you want, that'd be fine. Okay, then the event space for getting a sum of, a sum of six. Okay, so let's see, a sum of six. You wanna go back and look for the ones that when you add them up, you get six. See, this one works, one and five. So this one rolls on a one. So rows on a five, that gives you a total. If you add them up, that's six. So you can use that. What else? It's seven, 
three, four, five. Okay, here's another one, two and four. Two and four, that gives you six. What else? That's seven, eight, four, five, uh huh, six, so three and three. Mm -hmm. Seven, eight, nine, five. Six, yeah, we want six, right? Yes, yeah, six, so four and two, that'll work. That's seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, here's another one, six, five, and one. That's seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Okay, that's seven, eight, nine, ten. 11, 12, yeah. So you want it six. This, this already went over. See, six and one is seven. So all these go over. Okay, so that was, how many does that? One, two, three, four, five. Okay, so this one also has five total outcomes. And you want to highlight any overlaps. Do you have any overlaps? Do you see anything that's in in both the first line and the second line that's identical. Nope, nope. Okay, and sometimes that can happen. There's um, highlight any overlap. So you, you wanna say there's none, none. Okay, there's no overlaps and you didn't do anything wrong, but that can happen. And what that means is that it's, um, mutually exclusive because mutually exclusive looks like this mutually exclusive mutually exclusive looks like this there's an there's an overlap This one has no, no overlap, okay? So, so this is mutually exclusive and you just say that because these events do not have any common outcomes. It's these two events, that of uh, getting a sum of eight and that of getting a sum of six. So these two events do not have any common overlaps. Or let me say, let me say any common outcomes. So in other words, oh, excuse me, no overlaps. Okay, so these two events and those two events are that of rolling a sum of eight and the other one is uh, rolling a sum of six right those are the two those are the two events that we're talking about but those events don't have any common outcomes right okay so then um 
when we find our probability, see, the probability of rolling a sum of eight or sum of six. Okay. So what we're supposed to do is we're supposed to sum the events outcomes. And then we don't have to worry about subtracting. If any overlaps exist, then we subtract any overlaps, but they, we didn't have any. So we don't have to worry about subtracting, but we do have to go back and sum the events outcomes. So remember this one had five, that's why we wrote this down. So remember it's five over 36. Remember we were keeping track of the total, the total of rolling two die is 36. Plus the other events outcomes is there's also a total of five. But there's nothing to subtract because there's no overlaps. So, so that's all you have. And five, whenever you add a subtract fraction, you have to have a common denominator. So five and five is 10 over 36, and then that can be reduced by two. Half a 10 is five, and half a 36, I believe, is, is 18. So you can double check that here in the calculator. So 10 divided by two, 18 divided by two. Oh, excuse me, 36, it was 10 divided by two, which gave us five. 36 divided by 2, which is 18, excuse me. And if you do the math frac on that, you would have to do 10, let me see, 10 divided by 36 equals this decimal. And I can put that here just for practice. It's repeating. Instead of using the bar, I'll just do this. One, two, three, because usually we would round to the nearest thousand. Tens, hundreds, thousand. Look at the neighbors. That's five or more. Yes. So I add one to that. So we say 0 0.278. Okay. And this keeps going. Okay. And then. You do math, which is right here. And then frac number one and hit enter, hit enter. And then hit enter again. And see that reduced to 518. Okay. Okay, so we use math frac, so. Yeah, so we hit math frac. So we change to decimal. So we change 518 into a decimal. So five or no, 10, uh, 10 over 36. We change 10 over 36 into a decimal. So 10 divided by 36, and then we did math, and then frac, then hit enter, then hit enter again, and then it reduced it for us. Okay. Oh, and then if for some reason, if you wanted a percent, you know, five divided by 18 is this, and then times 100, and that's about 27.8%. So as a as a fra as a percent, you do five over eighteen times a hundred. And if I round to tenths, 
Look at the neighbor. Is that neighbor five or more? Yep, these are sevens. Yep. So it's five or more, yes. So it's about 27.8% if you wanted to round that to the tenths, tenths place. Okay, so so this was testing your vocabulary for the word or, not and, but for or, okay? Um, this, one just, this one just happened to be, uh, this one happened to be mutually exclusive, okay? All right. So no overlaps, nothing to subtract, okay? Okay, now on four, on four, I'm going to do, I'm going to do two problems related to four. This is the first one, but the second one I'm going to get from your ebook in a little bit, and I have a better one to do that more closely resembles what we're going to do on your test because it has per permutations, the keyword. But this one says, um, how many different 10 letter words, either real words or imaginary, can be formed from the following letters. So you have all these letters, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. There's ten letters there. Okay, so we're going to make use of permutation rule number two. Permutation rule number two, and that's this one. Um, in factorial over parentheses, R1 factorial times R2 factorial times dot, 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 times R sub P factorial, and then close parentheses. <laughs> Okay, so you should you should have that like if you look at your workbook at the back of 4.4, that's from section 4.4. You can see those formulas at the back of your workbook. Okay, so here, excuse me, in is the total amount of letters and that would be 10, okay? You saw me count them, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. Okay, and the parentheses are super important. Don't forget your parentheses because then your answer will come out different when you use your calculator. Um, you need that, okay, let's see. Um, okay, now you're going to count all the different, down here you're going to make a count of all the different letters, an inventory, so you're going to do an inventory for each letter provided. Okay, let's see, so the first letter I see is H, do you see any other H's? Nope. So, so if I let R1 equal R sub H, that only gives us one, one letter that's an R. Okay, now, now one factorial is one. So if you wanted to omit the one, you could, or you could put one factorial here, or you could leave it off because one factorial is just one. Okay, R sub two, the next letter is, um, that looks like an L. So I'm gonna say that's R sub L. How many L's do you have? So let's see, there's one here, two, three, four, wow, that's a lot, five of them. So that's five. Okay, so then, um, if I include that one, that'd be five factorial. Okay, what about R sub three? What letter will that be? So I already used up R. I already 
I already used up R1. R1 was H. And I already used up R sub 2. R sub 2 was L. There's five of them. Okay, so let's see. Now R sub 3 is, if we go down the list, looks like that's an R. Do you have any other R's? Mm -mm. Nope. That's one. So you actually can leave it out because it's one factorial. So the one factorial is one. So you can actually leave that off if you want. Then you have R sub four. And let's see. So I already talked about R. So it looks like that's going to be T. And there's no other T's there. So that would be one. And then R sub 5, let's see, R sub 5 is, looks like that'd be a Z. And that's just one. So you actually don't have to put that in here. And then the last one's R sub 6. And that has to do with, um, looks like that's V. So I could do this. R sub six equals R sub V. And that's just one, one of those, okay? So if I'm consistent over here to see R sub four, I should say R sub four is equal to R sub T, just one. And R sub five is equal to R sub, what was that? What was that letter? Was it Z? Because we did V, must have been Z. And that's just, that's just one. Okay. All right. So then, so then actually we just have five factorial. So then actually you don't need the parentheses because you only have the five factorial. If you had more, then you would need them, but this is actually fine. So this is 10 math tab to probability and you want to hit number four. Enter. Okay. And then now you're going to do, um, let's see, let me do that again. So let's see, if we had 10 math tab to probability, and then four, and then actually, um, if you want to do this all in one swoop, then you can press the division button. And then five. And then math. And then tab to probability. And then you want number four again. Because because four has the probability, that's why you want four. Because it has the probability in it. Hit enter. Okay. So you see this here? Ten factorial divided by five factorial, so just hit enter. And hit enter again. And it looks like that gives you, wow, 30,240. 30,240. Okay. Okay. All right. All right.
so then that takes care of that. So let me let me do one more with you. Um, because only because this uh, only let me do one more with you because you don't really get to practice with the denominator um, because there's only a five factorial. Let me do this. This is from your ebook. And let me let me do this one here. Look what it says. How many different permutations of the letters in the word Cincinnati are there? And you will have more one like this in your book because it'll tell you in your on your test it'll say permutation. That's a keyword. It's helpful. Okay, the one we did now it didn't it didn't use the keyword permutations. So, but let's do that. Let's see. So you can add this one to your sheet because I don't think we have room anywhere else to do it. Let me see if, if I go to the first page. Yeah, I don't, but the second page, yeah. So just go ahead and you can add this to your sheet and you can include that with your with your work. That'd be fine. And so, because we're doing on this review, let's see. example to help with what number was this this is to back up number four on page two of your tests number two review okay so it says letter permutations and it asks you how many different permutations of the letters in the word Cincinnati. So it's spelled C-I-N-C-I-N-N-A-T-I. Are there, question mark, okay? All right, so this is this is one where you're going to use the formula again. So you, so on the test, you want to write down the formula, and it's called um, well, it's called permutation rule number two. So it's n factorial parenthesis r sub one factorial times r sub two factorial times dot 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 r sub p factorial. Yeah, so if you if you check out your um your back of your workbook, that's what this says, right? The back of your workbook should have this. So that's this one, right? Okay. And they call it does have a name. It's uh where's the name at? It's called permutation rule number two. Permutation rule number two. So N is equal to the amount of letters in the word. Okay, so how many letters in the word? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, so 10. 
Okay, is that just a coincidence? The other one also had 10. So that's just a coincidence. The other one had 10 also. Okay, so you know you have 10 factorial over. Okay, then, we, then we'll start with r sub 1 equals r sub c, for example. How many how many c? So this is this is the account. This is the count of each letter. Right? The count of each letter. So C's you have one, two, and that's it. And I'm gonna highlight them. Okay, so then that means you have two factorial. And then R sub two is equal to the next letter is an I. How many how many I's do you see? So there's one, two, three. Okay, so this is three factorial. R sub three is equal to R sub N would be next. How many N's do you have? One, two, three. That's three factorial. You have next is um, R sub four, which is R, see after N is A. And it looks like you just have one, one, one A. Okay, so you don't have to write, you don't have to write that down because one factorial is just the value of one. So you don't, anything times one is itself. So you actually don't have to write that down unless you want to. And then R sub five is equal to R of T, which is also just one. So you don't have to write that in here if you don't want to. And then, and then you close the parenthesis. <laughs> Okay, okay, so then when we type this in, it's going to be 10, let me see, math, probability, number four, divided by, don't forget, open parenthesis, two, math, probability number four and then you don't even have to put times this is nexus implies so three math probability go down to number four okay and then there's one more times three math probability and you go down to four and then close the parenthesis and then enter. And that gives you, looks like 50,400. And yeah, I think that's what we saw. This, I had, I had the answer key here, let's see. Yep, 50,400, yep, okay. So yeah, so you'll have one closer to that because it's got the keyword permutations in there, okay? But I did two, two like that to help you with that, all right? And you can include that on your practice test and use that. You can staple that. When you staple that after this, that'd be fine. Okay, let's look at number five. Just organizing my papers while I'm at it. Sorry. Okay. 
We're looking at five. If one card is drawn from a deck of cards, okay, a deck of cards here, find the probability of getting a two and a diamond, okay? So there you, you have this deck of cards, right? And you want to find the power of getting a two, so you pull it out two, right? And then a diamond, okay? All right, so, and then write your answer as a fraction. Sometimes they want a percent, sometimes they want a decimal. So you have to read your directions, see how they want that. So they're wanting a fraction in simplest forms, okay? Okay, so this will be helpful is if you look at your cards and then also your vocabulary. Notice how it's not an and. Notice, notice how it's an and. The other one was an or. This is an and. So here's your event space for getting a two. And here's your event space for getting a diamond. So remember with and, what happens with ands is you just, um, you just sum any overlaps. So with the and, you just look to see if any of them overlap. And if they do, you want to add the overlaps. Okay, now getting a two, let's look at your cards here. If you get a two, notice how cards don't start with one. Notice how they don't start with one. Notice that these are your face cards. So you might want to put face cards here. These are your face cards. Notice how they, they don't start with one here. They start with two from two through 10. And then this ace card. So we don't give the ace card any value. It's not, don't think some games, they make it a zero or they make it a value. We don't do that. It's just an ace card and it's not a face card. And we're looking at the two. So you have the two of hearts, the two of diamonds, the two of spades and the two of clubs. So I'm actually gonna write those down, okay? Those are your outcomes. You have the two of hearts, the two of diamonds, the two of spades, and the two of clubs. Okay, and then the event space for getting a diamond. So look at your diamonds. All of these are your diamonds. See all your diamonds? So you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Yeah, in your cards, there's uh one, two, three, four suits. Thirteen times four, there's four suits. That's how we get a total of fifty-two. There's 52 cards and a deck of cards. So if you wanna write that down on your paper, that would be fine. Okay, and for us, we've got in each suit, it's 13 per suit. So I start with the ace and then I have the two, three. So sometimes in the past, you would see your teacher write two through nine two through nine and put a diamond. The only reason why I'm not doing that here is because I do have overlap, see? So these twos are gonna overlap. That's why I'm not gonna put two through nine. The other ones I did two through nine because there wasn't an overlap, but this one I'm seeing there's an overlap. So that's why I'm writing them all out. So it's two through 10, and then it was the face card. So you had the jack, and then the queen, and then the king. Okay, so that doesn't, does that take five grueling hours to write out? No, it doesn't. So just be patient and, and show your work. That way you don't use, 
you don't lose points, okay, on your test. You want to fill in your blanks, okay? And now you want to look for your overlaps. So it looks like we have uh, an overlap of the two of diamonds, and then that, that would be it. But there is one overlap, one overlap. So highlight any overlaps, okay, and, and we have one. Just one, the one at the twos, okay? So then see probability that we have a two and, so a two and a diamond, and the and you're just supposed to sum any overlap. So this is the only one we have. So we just have one, we just have one, and then the denominator, there's 52 cards in a deck. So one out of 52. And they said they wanted a fraction. This is a fraction. If they want a decimal, then one divided by 52 But then they would have to tell you what to round off to. So probably they would say thousands, right? Tens, hundreds, thousands. And then look at the neighbor. Is this five or more? Nope, that's a two. So you leave it as a nine. And then if, if they want a percent, if they want a percent, one over 52 times 100. One divided by 52 times 100. One divided by 52. So one divided by 52 times 100. So it'd be about, if you round to the nearest tenths, is the neighbor five or more? Nope, that's a two, so it's about 1.9%. So that's if they wanted it as a percent, that's how you would figure that, okay? They just, they said they wanted a fraction, is what they said, they wanted a fraction, okay? Find the probability getting a card with a black two. Okay, card with a black two. Okay, so card with a black two. Okay, so here, here are your black cards, and you want a black two. So it looks like you would have this, the club, or the spade, excuse me, the spade and the club. Yeah, so if you want to write that down here, these are the spades, and these are the clubs. That might help you process that. I think you already know this is the heart and the diamonds, but this one, you, you might kind of get confused. So this one's a spade and one's a club. The club looks like a like a flower. So the black two, you have these two here. So the black two, you have um, the two that's a spade, and you also have the two that's a club. So you have two of them. So remember, you want successes over your total, right? So successes, you have two of these. So two, and then the denominator is 52, okay? And then that can be reduced by two. Two divided by two is one. Two divided by two is one. And 52 divided by two, half of 52 is 26. Okay. Okay, next we say that human blood is grouped into four types. The percentages of Americans with each type of blood are listed below. So let's say 45% had type O, 37% had type A, 15% had type B, 3% had AB. And this is from the source here. Choose one American at random. Find the probability 
the uh, right find the following probability and then write the answer as a reduced fraction again. Okay, so the probability that does not have type O or AB. So this does not have. That means you're going to use the complement. And then also now we have the or involved here. And this is this is blood types. So if this is blood types, that's going to be the mutually exclusive, which is this. You know, you you cannot mix if you have a blood transfusion or something, you cannot mix the different types of blood because that could harm the person, right? So that it's mutually exclusive as opposed to mutually inclusive where there's an overlap, there's no overlap here. And so, and so remember the complement, remember? See this? Probability of E complement, the bar, one minus probability of E, see that? So that means this, the knot is probability of E bar which is one minus probability of E. So it's one minus probability that if this says does not have, then we say that they, they do, they do have type O or AB. So this says does not have, this says that they do, they do have it. So they do have do have it. Okay, so then uh, that would be do have it. So that would be this then probability of O plus probability of AB. Okay, so I can find that on here. Mm -hmm, right here. See, mutually exclusive, see that? See? That's addition rule number one. That's addition rule number one. Okay, so that says probability of A or B is equal to probability of A plus probability of B. That's what they're using, see? Let me see. Okay, now, now you're gonna do your sub substitutions. Now you do your substitutions. So um, probably of O is this over here, 45%. See, O is 45% and then AB is 3%, okay? So, so we have 45% plus, Three percent. Okay, so we have one minus forty-eight percent. Okay. Okay. Now the thing is, when you combine units, you have to have the same units. So you you're gonna have to change. You can change this um, to a decimal or change it to a a fraction because they did want a fraction. They did want a fraction. So if you want, you can say one minus 48 over 100. Percent means percent means parts per 100. So 48 over 100. And then this can be reduced by, I think, by four. 48 divided by 4 is 12, and 100 divided by 4 
is 25. So this can be 1 minus 48 divided by 4 is 12, and 100 divided by 4 is 25. And whenever you add a subtract fraction, you have to have a common denominator. So 1 becomes 25 over 25 minus 12 over 25. And 25 minus 12 is 13. 13 over 25. OK. OK. And that's this is the way I show this in class. Now, there is uh, another way I'll show you on another sheet of paper if you want to do it that way. This, here's another way to show that. Um, they say, I like this one. This is the one I show in class because it, it uses the definition. But there is another one that says um, probability does not have type O or AB is equal to the probability that it has has type A or B. So if they don't have O and they don't have AB, the, if they don't have O and they don't have AB, then that means that they've got to have A or they've got to have B. So that's showing um, showing it that way. And, and that, that is allowed to be showed that way then if you want to do that. So then, so then here you'd have probability of A plus probability of B. And then probably of A is 37%. Probably of B is 15%. And 37 plus 15 is 52%. So that's 52 over 100. And if you reduce that by 4, 52 divided by 4 is 13, and 100 divided by 4 is 25. So I think we get the same, the same answer, and, and that's another way of working it out, then that's easier for you. Depending on your left brain or right brain, it, it works out too. OK. And let me see if, if I can, anything else from that page. I think that, I think that'd be fine, okay. All right, so I'll include that in, in the back, but I, in class I showed this one, the remote class learning, and I think also, yeah, in the remote learning and the recordings, I think I just showed that. I don't think I did it two ways. I think I pushed that. Okay, but technically they can both be used. Okay, let's see. The next pro problem, find the probability of getting five face cards when five face cards are drawn from a deck without replacement. Okay, so you're not you're not putting them back. You're not putting them back. So if you're doing without replacement, that means you're making use of multiplication row number two. Okay. And that means that you have um, D 
independent events. Okay. And here's multiplication rule number two. Let me write that down. Probably A and B is equal to probably of A times probably of B given that A has already occurred. And I'm going to let F denote selecting a face card. And find all, probably that all the five cards drawn are going to be face cards, OK? OK, so I'm going to do this. So I'm going to go down this way. Okay, so I'm going to start with definition, this definition right here, and that F. So I have, you need to make sure you change your letter, whatever, whatever letter we're using on your, on your practice test, uh, uh, you have from your road test, it's, if it's not the same letter, you need to make sure you, you fix that, the letter. So this will probably lightly change on the road test. So I look for that. So don't just copy verbatim from your practice test. Make sure you update your letters. This is F1 and F2 and F3 and F4. And then we'll stop at F5. And why do we stop at five? Because there was five. Um, drawn, right? Five cards drawn. And this would be like randomly, right? Randomly drawn. Okay, so then we have probability of F sub one times. Okay, now let's think about, let's think about your face cards, your, your face cards. Let's see, who were your face cards? And we're selecting all our face cards. So let's see. These are all our face cards. Looks like you have what? Three, six, nine, twelve. Looks like you have twelve of them. Twelve face cards. Yeah. So you have the heart of the jack, the heart of the queen, the heart of the king, the diamond, OK, you also have the spades. Let me put them over here. And then you also have the clubs. So again, that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. That's twelve. And then your denominator is fifty two cards in the deck. Okay. All right. But then we're going to select again. So so when we, we have these cards, deck of cards, deck of cards, and you're going to pull one of these out. So let's just say, let me find one of them. Let me find one of you. Where are your, let me find one of your um, face cards. Here we go. Here's the jack. Okay, so you got in here, you got, your 12 cards and let's say you pull one out and let's say it's this one so then so then you're not you're not going to put it back it says over here without replacement so you're gonna you're gonna not going to put it out you leave it over here and then you have your little stack here okay but then but then you're going to pick again you got to pick five times so now you have 
probability of F2 given that, that F1 has occurred. Okay, so now you have 12 minus 1 over 52 minus 1. Because see, now you have 51 cars. So this is 12 over 52 times, now you have 51 cards. And, and now you have in your deck here, you have um, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. You have 11, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 to choose from, okay? But then, but then when you choose that, let me find another card. Let me find another face card. Let's just find the, the jack that's a diamond. Let's say, let's say here's the jack that's the diamond. So then let's say, you, let's say you pick that second, you pick that card out, but you're not going to put it back in the deck. So now you have these cards now, and you have these two that you're not putting back. So that means you have now 52 minus 2. That means now you have 50 here. 50 here, because here's your 51 and 52. And and now 12 minus 1. All right, 12 minus 2 is 10. So now you have 10 cards in here, right? 10 of them in here. Because now um, first you picked out this one, yellow. And then the second one, we say, what do we picked out? The jack, that's why we picked out the jack of diamonds, right? That was this here. So now, now you have 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 of them, 10 of them now. So this is, this is a probability of now the third one, given that the previous has occurred. So the previous is all of this, right? That F2 given F1 occurred, right? Okay, so now, so now we have um, probability of, let's see. Let's say, you find another card. Let's say I picked another card out. Let me find one of your spades or something, let's see. Let's find the let's find the club. Let's see. See this. Let's say I pulled out the king of clubs, which would be let's say I pulled out the king of clubs, this one. And I'm not I'm not gonna put it back. See, so now I have these three that I'm not gonna put back in this stack here. Right? So you have three here. That means you have um, 49 cards here now. You have 49, 49, 50, 51, 52. So now you have 49 cards left to draw from, right? And you have to do this five times. So we're at one, two, three. I gotta do this two more times. So this is gonna be 12 minus three over 52 um, minus three, okay? So this is one, two, three, four. So you're picking the fourth card. So this is um, probability that you're going to pick the fourth card. So one, two, three, the fourth card, given that the previous has occurred. So the previous is all of this. F3 given F2 
to given f one. It's just it's just you're just writing the previous events what you're writing. Okay, and then let's say you picked out, so we picked out three of them already. Let's say we picked out, let me find a spade. Here's a spade. Let's say, let's say now we picked out the queen of spades. So let's say here's the queen of spades. Let's say we picked out the queen of spades, okay? And we're not replacing it. So see, we're putting it over here, see? We have four of them. And now you have these, this deck now. Okay, so you got four of them. So let me see. You got four out. So you got, um, looks like we have 48 now. Yeah. So let's see. 12 minus 3 is 9. 52 minus 3 is 49. 1, 2, 3, 4. Yeah. So I have this seat. One, two, three, four pulled out already. Okay. All right. So now that means you have 48, right? That means you have 48 left, right? Because these four are here, 48. 48 and four is 52. And and you got one, two, three, four, five. One more draw. You have to draw, draw five times. So now this is going to be an eight. So now this is going to be... 12 minus 4, 52 minus 4. Mm -hmm. And um, so one, two, three. And so let's pick up fifth one. Let's say, let's say I go back. Let's just say I go back to the, the hearts. And let's say I pick out a king. So it's one, two, three, four. Five. Let's say I pick out a king of hearts. Let's see where I can find that at. Here we go. Let's say here's see here's the king of heart. So let's say I pull that out and I'm not putting it back. So you see, so I have one, two, three, four, five. Okay, so. 52 minus 5 is 47, 47 cards. So there's 47 now left in the deck, okay? So I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. But, but I'm not picking any, any more out, right? So this is the last one, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And, um, and I highlight them, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. One, two, three, four, five. And then I just need to put this fifth one here. So now I'm going to pick probability of F sub five, given that this previous has occurred, which was this, um, all this event, previous event, right? So it was F four given this f3 given this f2 given f1 so close parentheses close parentheses and then close this parentheses yeah so on the on the tests, I usually don't draw it out five because that is a lot to keep track of. So I usually don't draw it out that much five times on the test, but that gives you the idea to practice the one before that. Okay. 
and that this is the multiplication rule number two, one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, so then when I multiply this out, I've got 12, 12 times 11 times 10 times 9 times 8, which is 95,040. And then on the bottom, 52 times 51 times 50 times 49 times 48. Wow, look at that. Hundreds, thousands, well, millions, 300 and mil 311 million, 875,200. Okay. And sometimes, sometimes a calculator, sometimes a calculator cannot, depending on the, the numerator and denominator, sometimes the calculator cannot reduce it using MathFrag. And I think that's what happens here. Uh, you might have to reduce it on your own. So let's see, because you know these are even, you know these, you know these n and zero. So you see how you have these n zeros? Technically you can divide this like by 10 and that would knock out these zeros. So now you have 9504 over 3118 Yeah, and then the commas have changed. So this comma is optional, one, two, three commas this is optional because you have four numbers, but this is required. One, two, three, comma, one, two, three, comma required. Okay, so now I try to do a math frack on that. Let me, let me see if I can do it. Let me go to 95, 9504 divided by 31187520. So there's my, there's my decimal, which is a really small number. This is a really small number. This is just for the practice. This is um, 3.04737275 um, e to the negative four. That means it's 3.04737275 times 10 to the negative four. That's a really um, small number. See that negative four? That means I'm gonna to have to move the decimal left four times. So that this, this doesn't count. But I have six, no, I have three zeros. One, two, three. And then this counts as a fourth move. Okay, so I have to move it four times. So this counts as one move, and then I need three zeros. So that's a total of four. But I don't forget about all these other digits. That's a really small number. And if you had to round, uh, they probably would have you round to the nearest ten thousands because they don't want you to record zero uh, if it's not a true zero. This is not five or more. So this would be 0 0.0003. Okay. But they didn't they didn't want a decimal. They wanted a fraction. Okay. So then let's let's see if the calculator can do that. So then you're gonna have to go to math frac. So go to math, hit math, and then go to frac and hit enter, and then hit enter again. Nope, see how it gives you the same thing back? Okay, so it can be reduced, but you'll have to do it by hand. So let's see, so we'll have to go back to this here. I have to go back to this here, and then I'm going to just reduce it by two, whole bunch of twos. 
We just have to be patient. Let's see. Nine five zero four divided by two. Three one one eight seven five two zero divided by two. And one two three comma one two three comma. Okay, see I can still reduce that by two. Let me see if I can try four instead of trying two a lot of times. Let me try four. Four seven five two divided by four. As long as I don't get any decimals. One five five nine three seven six zero divided by four. Yeah, as long as I don't get any decimals, it's safe. So this one 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 eight eight. This one three eight nine eight four four zero. Okay, let me try four again. I know this is even. I know two will work, but let me just try four. One one eight eight divided by four. Mm -hmm. Three eight nine eight four four zero divided by four. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, I don't know if um I don't know if uh if 297 is a prime number or not, but I have, you know, I have this multiplication chart in the back of my multiplication chart, I have this list of primes. And I do have a list of primes from my uh, 410, my 105 class. So on a white sheet of paper. So I could include that if I do like a, a scan PDF of this, that way, um, you can see that that sheet, the prime numbers that might work. But let me just see if 297 is on there. If it's on there, that means it's prime, but it's not. See 293 and then it jumps to 307. See how 297 is not on there? That means that it's not prime. That means it can be reduced. Now it can't be reduced by two anymore, but maybe three will work. Let's see, 297 divided by three. Uh-huh. Okay, let's see if it goes, it has to work for both of them. Let's try the bottom. Mm-hmm, so it does work by three. Okay, let me see if three will work again, because two doesn't work. I know that's not, that's not an even number, but let's see if three works again. Mm-hmm. It does, that's 33, and then that's 108290. Okay, let's try three one more time. It's, I know I know two doesn't work because that's not even, but let's try three one more time. Nope, see how I get a decimal? Okay, maybe 11. Let's see if 11 works. I know 11 goes into 33. Let's see if it goes into the bottom one. Let's see if 11 works. Nope, see how I get a decimal? Nope. Okay, so, so it looks like that was the lowest terms then. Let me make sure. Yeah, it looks like I stopped there. Just double checking. All right. Okay, cool. All right. So I'm going to take a break. And then when we come back, we'll continue. And it looks like we stopped at seven. Okay. All right. Okay. See you in a bit. <laughs> 